thank you for waiting friends it's a bit late today wasn't it but i got to researching a particular place on the world map as i was presenting or getting my presentation ready for you today and for some reason i was focused on a particular region in the world and i believe this is something that the lord is showing me so i want to share it with you so bear with me as you can see i was looking at the world news and to find out what's been going on <clears throat> what's the latest so far um oh, where to begin <laughs> okay so there's certain things that have been happening i'm going to cover just a little bit of it you know because i'm focused on a particular region largely the middle east but this conflict russia ukrainian conflict is really shaking up the wider region well on a global scale really so there are some things that i can't talk about because we'll be here forever and there's some things i think i think i should mention it turkey's erdogan brings rival palestinian leaders together the Palestinian Authority and Hamas leaders. We know, if you've watched my older videos, how, how long have you been listening to me, friends? Some of you go way back, right from the beginning. You know that Erdogan, Turkey, have affiliations with the Muslim Brotherhood. Hamas being the military wing of the Muslim Brotherhood. So it's no brainer that their relationship will continue and Lord only knows what on earth is going on behind closed doors. I believe that this uh, relationship runs a lot deeper and I believe he hasn't really shown his true colours yet. Although there have been glimpses of it in the past with his radical poetic statements that he made about Islamic Jihad and what have you. I don't think he's fully come out in the open yet, but it's interesting that he's now posing as a mediator, which is very classic Erdogan, looking to make regional um, impressions because of, well, resources, isn't it? This Antichrist B system that's coming in the future, friends, and the conflicts, it's all going to revolve around resources, natural resources. And I know I say this a lot. You may have heard me say this many times. But I'm talking about natural resources, including water. Water is a commodity that is very quickly running out in that region. And we know the river Euphrates is going to be a particular river source, water source, that is going to entirely run dry. And we'll go to those scriptures in just a moment. So he's building these two to bond together. So this is what's happening here. In the US, they're still keen to push Saudi Arabia and Israel to normalize their relations, to come out in the public arena and to openly accept peace between one another. <clears throat> and I think the Biden administration really needs this under its belt something to i don't know outnumber or outsmart trump you know to top what he did with the abraham accords it doesn't look like it's happening anytime soon but i guarantee you it's coming it's in the pipelines friends and it's going to hinge on the temple mount and the palestinian situation for saudi arabia definitely the status quo so this is what the us is doing at the moment what do I have here? Turkey's fifth answer is no solution without Russia to grain deal because the Ukraine is trying to go directly to Turkey to resume the deal that they had, the shipment of those grains. Turkey saying kind of like can't do that without Russia's say so. We really need Russia to come back to the table. In his Middle East tour, especially to the Gulf states, Turkey ended up striking a deal with the rich royals in the united arab emirates he went back home with 50 billion dollars remember all of this because there's going to come a time according to the scriptures that these 10 rulers that give their kingdom and authority to the beast turn on the harlot and they betray her 
there's a lot of deceit, a lot of treachery involved, and I know I say that a lot too, but these are very key elements in Bible prophecy in terms of the beast, the nature of this um, coalition. And it's going to seem as though they all get along very well. They've all made peace. This is a season of normalizations and whatever. This is what we're hearing about very, what, in the past two years, three years now? Normalizations, everyone getting along together. I'm not quite there where I want to get to, but I'm just showing you some of the news that I was preparing until I began focusing on a particular region. And I have mentioned it before. The Organization of Islamic Corporation, over 52 Islamic states that have their own club, are very upset about what's happening in Israel. So you see, Israel is always going to have to appease its Islamic neighboring countries. Although it wants to work with the Arabs in the south, the Abraham Accords, doing deals with Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, the Abrahamic House and all that nonsense, it still has their throats gripped by the Islamic world, you see? So the appeasement is always going to be there. The fear, the anxiety that they have to somehow satisfy the majority of the nations who they are surrounded by, which are all Islamic today. So, I got in to read this scripture. I'm, I'm moving on very swiftly here, as you can see. In Isaiah chapter 14, I believe this chapter, friends, is showing us, and I have talked about this before as well, but I think it's good to go over it one more time. This chapter is, I believe, in my understanding, how I see it at least, <clears throat> is showing us the location of the primary center, center point on the map of the location of the Antichrist, the man, the person who Satan, the dragon, will inhabit. He has a region, and I believe he's always had influence over this region from the get-go. I'm talking about back in the days of the book of Genesis. Remember the serpent in the garden? Well, where was the garden? What was the location? Bible scholars, and if you have a good look online, most of them will agree it was in the region where the Euphrates is today, the Garden of Eden. So he's coming full circle. And I believe this could be, I'm speculating, this region could be where the dragon is thrown out. Let me read the scripture. There's a mercy promised to Israel, to Jacob. Even after their rebellious ways and even after the judgments that the Lord will bring on them, according to his righteousness, after the chastisement has come and gone, the Lord will bring mercy on Jacob. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will still choose Israel and settle them in their own land. He's never forgotten the covenant he made with Abraham, never. And it will come to pass. The strangers will be joined with them. The strangers, those who are foreign to Israel, who possibly already inhabit the land, will be joined to Israel. But that's the criteria, you see. They must be joined. That means accepting the God of Israel. Hallelujah. The strangers will be joined with them and they will cling to the house of Jacob. Then people will take them and bring them into their place. The house of Israel will possess them for servants and maids in the land of the Lord. They will take them captive, whose captives they were, and rule over their oppressors. This is all going to come to pass, my darling friends, I believe, in the millennium period. When all the land allotments will be given to the twelve tribes of Israel. All the promises, you guys, that the Lord made to Abraham are actually going to come to pass. He didn't just, you know, speak figuratively that each tribe will have their land allotments. But temporarily, temporarily <clears throat> they've been forfeited because they're outside of the covenant. They've rejected the Messiah. But that is not the end of the story. No way. No chance. 
And then the Lord turns his attention to the enemy. It shall come to pass in the day the Lord gives you rest from your sorrow and from your fear and the hard bondage in which you were made to serve that you will take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say how the oppressor has ceased. Notice the oppressor is always north of Israel and it's always going to be that way. I know I've heard people um, sort of saying it's possible the beast or the antichrist the man of sin could be Muhammad bin Salman the young prince of Saudi Arabia that does not align with what the scriptures are saying he's definitely one to watch in terms of what he does with his relationship with Israel I think <clears throat> he's going to be leading Babylon the Great the leader of Babylon the Great the harlot which is a city in the Arabian Peninsula, not the Antichrist. We need to look for further north for the Antichrist. The harlot in the south and the beast, the Antichrist in the north. Is that easy to follow? How the oppressor has seized, the golden city seized. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. He has struck the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He who ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and no one hinders the, the retaliation is coming to who the king of babylon and this isn't just your average joe person let's carry on reading they break forth into singing because peace will break out when this dude is dealt with finally he is the oppressor and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since you were cut down, no woodsman has come up against us. Again, the Bible references trees as analogy to represent people, authority, rulers, or even people groups. The word, the analogy of trees is symbolic of people, leadership, authority. <clears throat> Since you were cut down, no woodsman has come up against us. Hell from beneath is excited about you, to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the dead for you. All the chief ones of the earth it has raised up from their thrones, all the kings of the nations. They shall all speak and say to you, Have you also become as weak as we? Have you become like us? Your pomp is brought down to Sheol, and the sound of your stringed instruments... The maggot is spread under you and worms cover you. The stringed instruments are related to Lucifer. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. You see the battle of Gog and Magog, friends, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38. <clears throat> And in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, when the dragon, who is bound for a thousand years, is released, the word of God says he goes out to deceive the nations again. It is him, Lucifer, the fallen one, the fallen angel, who is the deceiver of the nations. And here, <clears throat> it says he is the one who weakens the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. But he's been cast out from that region, the heights of the clouds. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. You know, this is a real place, you guys. There are people whose testimonies <clears throat> of life after death, Christians. And some of these testimonies are from non-Christians who when they died, their bodies were translated to this place, which is thousands of miles below the earth in utter darkness and unbearable heat to discover that Jesus is God 
He is the Lord and it's him will be faced on judgment day. And everything the Bible says is true. And then those precious souls came back from the dead and confessed Jesus. They saw him. They saw the reality of hell and it's right down below the earth. This is where all their testimonies are in sync with one another. It's below the earth and this is the destiny of this one, the Lucifer character. Just an interesting side note. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, is this the man? Hmm. The man? I thought we were talking about a fallen angelic being. You see, he does his nasty bad work when, when he inhabits a human vessel, which is what Gog and Magog are. It's the dragon inhabiting a vessel, just like the Holy Spirit seeks to dwell in the believer, born again believer, sanctified, baptized, born again, new creation. The Holy Spirit seeks to dwell in us. And the Father and the Son come to make their home in us. The counterfeit over here, Lucifer, wants to do the same thing for wicked intentions. Is this man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory, everyone in his own house. But you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like the garment of those who are slain, thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit, like a corpse trodden underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. The brood of evildoers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his children because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with cities. Hmm. For I will raise up against him, says the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and offspring and posterity, says the Lord. I will also make it possession for the porcupine and marshes of muddy water. I will sweep it with a broom of destruction, says the Lord of hosts. He does not like this dude, this um, person, this character. <clears throat> I shouldn't say the word dude. Oh. Assyria is destroyed. So there's a connection between Assyria and Babylon. Do you catch this? The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely... As I have thought, so it shall come to pass, and as I have purposed, so it shall stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land, because the Assyrian will come into the land. And that is the hook, I believe, that the Lord is using to bring the enemy of Israel into the land, so that in the land of Israel, the Lord Jesus will deal with his enemy there. Very smart military tactic. And on my mountains tread him underfoot. Very, this is a sign of great humiliation. Then his yoke shall be removed from them and his burden removed from their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed against the whole earth. And this is a hand that is stretched out over all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purposed and who will annul it? His hand is stretched out and who will turn it back? He turns his attention to this city, Philistia, which is Hamas territory today. <clears throat> this is the burden which came the year that King Ahaz died. Do not rejoice all you of Philistia, because the rod that struck you is broken. For out of the serpent's roots will come forth a viper, and his offspring will be a fiery flying serpent. The firstborn of the poor will feed and the needy will lie down in safety. I will kill your roots with famine and it will slay your remnant. Wail, O gate, cry, O city. All your Philistia are dissolved for smoke will come from the north and no one will be alone in these appointed times. What will they answer the messengers of the nation that the Lord has founded Zion and the poor of his people shall take refuge in it? And if he's founded it, no one can remove it or nobody can wipe it off the face of the earth so in the same 
context Syria, Babylon destroyed, and all connected to Lucifer. <clears throat> How he has fallen, and when he's fallen, the regions where he had his grip will also fall. But there are other scriptures that mention the remnant that the Lord will preserve in these former regions of the empires. The Lord has his remnant there, friends. Excuse me, here we go. The Assyrian Empire. So I was preparing these scriptures, looking at these maps. And then as I was doing this, I came and stopped at a particular location. And then I went and got maps about that specific people groups. Here you go, the Assyrian Empire. And this one is the Babylonian Empire. You can see they're very much resemble, don't they? Let's go back. Assyrian. Turkey is covered. Iran. Babylon, Iraq. Jerusalem. Egypt. Pretty much the same here. Just moved a little south. The Babylonian Empire. Medo Persian. Same, similar, expanded somewhat. Territorial wise, it's bigger than the Babylonian. And the Greek Empire. Very similar maps, aren't they? Very similar. Which is why in the book of Revelation, chapter 13. <laughs> Excuse me terrible dry cough in the book of revelation chapter 13 the leopard empire the lion and the bear are mentioned which relates to daniel chapter 7 which relates to also daniel chapter 2 let me get my other visual <clears throat> which also relates to the statue image you see Babylon, Persia, Greco-Macedonia, or the Greco-Roman Empire, until we get to the port bottom portion <clears throat> of this region. And this illustration is showing us that Islam ticks all the boxes for the fulfillment of this fourth and final beast. So it would make sense that the Lord is speaking to, to two primary locations here in Isaiah 14. Assyrian, Babylonian and mentions Philistia. So they're going to be connected to Hamas. Are you following with me so far? Where's my first picture? They're going to be connected to these guys. <clears throat> Hamas in Philistia, Gaza. What am I talking about? Gaza territory. Okay. This was the Islamic kingdom. Islamic conquest between the 7th and 9th century. Only between the 7th and 9th century. It continued, but this is at its extent during that time. Following this period, the Ottoman Empire came. You see? <clears throat> the Ottoman Empire now this is where our Roman revived empire friends get stuck and I understand why you get stuck because this is all we've ever been taught that it's the Roman Empire never mind if it's all that we've been taught we've still got time to revise what we've been taught to start all over again those of you who hold to the view of the Roman Empire please reconsider the facts <clears throat> after the Roman Empire came this empire the Islamic Empire and it was always around and it still is today but it's fragmented 
they don't have a particular one unified leadership but this is what they're working towards a political military economic religious unification okay this was your revival of the European Empire only problem is it was Islamic okay this what is what the map shows us expansion of the Ottoman Empire the conquests you see all of North Africa Europe yes Christian West had a very very traumatic experience during this time for further information look up videos and written um, content by Professor Bill Warner Bill Warner he's on YouTube and he's on a website you can go find out I've shown these videos before I don't have one ready right now and this is the envisioned 2023 map that was floating around a couple of years ago of what Erdogan would like to do with Turkey its expansionist ideology taking over North Iraq taking over North Syria taking over Greece Cyprus and really um, becoming a revival of the Ottoman Empire even though this is limited this is not the full extent this was the full extent of the Ottoman Empire so people in the region are worried about his intentions we should see if he's the leader that brings about the rise of the Antichrist or not now then I landed on this map here Kurdistan do you see it? This is a very old map. I believe this is post World War Two. <clears throat> Everything in the dark green is what would have been, but is not. Uh, is what they they're seeking to attain. Would have been the Kurdistan state. Very interesting, don't you think? Now, God in his sovereignty for some good wise reason has not permitted this from coming to pass they've obviously got huge resistance in Turkey who are fighting them invading northern Iraq and Syria but these people groups haven't realized their own nationhood their own state this what the this is what the flag and the state would have been. This these are very old maps. <clears throat> the location, friends. It's all about location, location, location. When we are talking about the Bible prophecy, and if the people who are teaching <clears throat> excuse me, your prophecy teachers or anyone who is um presenting to you their theory on the end times the antichrist the kingdom of the beast and if they're not talking to you about maps location geography their their interpretations cannot be trusted i'm sorry because the bible is a lot of information about maps geography and politics yes so we can't forget this element we can't ignore this huge chunk because then we're missing and people are just you know making their own pictures up as to what the end times will look like aliens and what <clears throat> that's not the case is it i got to looking at some more information the last and unt untold history of the kurds I won't go through all this but just to let you know that these peoples were so close to realizing their own state after the end of the Ottoman Empire friends after the end of the Ottoman Empire and the lands were divided these people were promised their own state but it was rejected it was never seen through and so which bit of, it, of this do I want to read? <clears throat> oh, there's too much to read here.
there's got there is a lot of information available on these people groups if you want to read and find out the point that I'm making is they are a people to watch the Syrian conflict right now the Syrian conflict Turkey is in Syria yes they're fighting the terrorists right what Turkey deems terrorist ter territorial threat to Turkey and those people are Kurds that they're fighting <clears throat> for some reason friends this region is really if you let me just show you the map again one more time let me get the map look at the map look at it I mean my goodness it's covering like pinpoint the very location a Syrian Empire and the, the city of Olympia oh. is located no I don't want that I hate when that activates go away no bye bye it's in the same location very interesting that it's right here Assyrian Babylonian Kurdistan could this be a good reason why the man of sin is not revealed yet what am I saying well <clears throat> we know that the ten kings when they come together there will be a people who have not been given any power yet what does the scripture say let me take us there one moment let me go to <clears throat> I want to go to Isaiah 21 as well I've got Ezekiel 38 let me go there show you so Revelation 13 let's read okay <clears throat> Let's read from verse 2. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. <clears throat> his feet were like the feet of a bear. And his mouth like the mouth of a lion. Again, covering those regions. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if he had been mortally wounded. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? He was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. For 42 months. Three and a half years. So short-lived reign or power. But it's going to be devastating, yes? Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written. Those who are crossed out or not even written in the book of life will worship the beast. And now the false prophet, that is, the one who does all the signs and wonders is basically it's a two-man army a two-man system that is going to really shake the region in Revelation 18 17 the harlot and the beast are connected together <clears throat> she's riding it when john is shown this vision he marvels because it reads i will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her which has the seven heads and the ten horns the beast is thought and is not will ascend out of the bottomless pit and we're going to petition and those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life and the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was that was and is not and yet is so as i read these scriptures i'm thinking ottoman empire the assyrians and the babylonians all blended in 
empires that were, is not, and yet is. The Ottoman Empire was the most recent out of them. But there is a close similarity to the Assyrian and the B Babylonian empires. Basically, does that all make sense? The point I was trying to make. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet. So the ten horns, according to what's written here, they've received no kingdom. I understand this to mean they don't have great political influence. They don't carry a lot of weight on the political arena when they come to the table, let's say. So could these... Ten kings be those kind of leaders that are just not able to have any sort of power in the political arena. Is it both? Is it economic weakness, political, military, spiritual? Because they're vulnerable, aren't they? There's a reason they give their authority. I mean, they haven't had authority, they don't have any kingdom. But when they receive it, even though it's a short season, they give it over to the beast. So you see, the beast, the Antichrist, manipulates the ten kings in doing so. But they receive authority for one hour as kings of the beast. Kurdistan, the region, clearly has been given no authority, autonomy, kingdom. Another thing I noticed, that the territory at the end of the 1925 area uh, timeline, the country of the Kurds <laughs> found itself divided between four states. Is that interesting or what? Because the book of Daniel talks about the horns, kingdom, being divided up into four. I don't know if this is directly connected, but it's interesting that ever since this time, Turkey, Iran, Iraq and Syria have all been meddling in this region. Not to over-exaggerate, to over-emphasise, but there is great evil lurking here. is being prevented from being unleashed. <clears throat> Some other connections, the Kurds related to ancient media, because I'm going to take you to Isaiah chapter 21. I believe that in the end times, you see these scriptures that we read, they've got to be read together for counter-reference and to really interpret scripture with scripture. In this scripture, in Isaiah 21, it says that the Lord is going to stir up the Medes and those from Elam against Arabia. Is it interesting then that the people groups of the Azeris from Azerbaijan and the Kurdish peoples are closely connected to the region, including Iran? So you've got Iran, Kurds and Azerbaijan closely connecting to one people groups. Although they've been amalgamated and mixed, interbred or whatever, culturally, language and everything else. They closely resemble one another. Only for a relatively short time did those mountainous areas come to be called media. Kurdish culture, which identifies the Kurdish people has its native roots in the distinguished legacy of all those who preceded the Medes, but also includes the Medes. But they don't have a, a country yet. They don't have a kingdom yet. Media, ancient country of northwestern Iran, generally corresponding to the modern regions of Azerbaijan, Kurdistan. So when this you know, whether or not it becomes a state like this, 
or will it be those four regions, Turkey, Iran, Iraq, Syria, decide to divide it, split it and keep it as four distinct regions, there's going to be one ruler and I believe that one ruler that takes control over this region and its people, the Kurds, will be the Antichrist. Let's read that scripture actually. <clears throat> Isaiah 21. When you read this scripture, it is clear the Lord is referring to Babylon of the end times. The fall of Babylon, but this Babylon is in Arabia, not a Babylon in the north. The burden against the wilderness of the sea. I've done so many videos on this. Please check my playlist. I had a video up here. Let me show you which one it is. Um, I got the wrong playlist now. Oh. Please check this video here. Israel in the wilderness. Mountain of God location. This is a wonderful Bible study. This one here. Please check this. Israel in the wilderness. Very important. I talk a lot about Saudi Arabia. The location of the wilderness where the children of Israel ended up in afterward when they came out of the land of Egypt. Watch that video, please. As whirlwinds in the south pass through, let's read this narrative. So it comes from the desert. There's a storm that's come up from the desert. You can imagine, right? From a terrible land. A distressing vision is declared to me. The treacherous. Here we go. The treachery. Somebody has been lying, being deceitful, backstabbing, and crafty treacherous the treacherous dealer deals treacherously the dealer deals very interesting words and the plunderer plunders go up Elam there's a command to Elam a media somebody's giving the command to go go up Elam besiege your media I believe the command is given by the Lord this is a prophetic scripture, so we've got to try to ask the Holy Spirit to help us understand who's speaking to who, to whom, and when is this going to happen. All its sighing I have made to cease. Therefore my loins are filled with pain. Pangs have taken hold of me like the pangs of a woman in labor. This is, I mean, such is the terrible vision. I was distressed when I heard it. I was dismayed when I saw it. My heart wavered. Fearless, fearfulness frightened me. The night for which I longed, he turned into fear for me. Prepare the table. Set a watchman in the tower. Eat and drink. Arise, ye princes. Anoint the shield. For thus has the Lord said to me, Go set a watchman. Let him declare what he sees. And he saw a chariot with a pair of horsemen, a chariot of donkeys, of camels, and he listened earnestly with great care. Then he cried, A lion, my lord. I stand continually on the watchtower in the daytime. I have sat at my post every night. And look, here comes a chariot of men with a pair of horsemen. Then he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Not only, you see, do we find these words repeated in the book of Revelation in, in relation to Babylon the Great, the harlot. But this is where it was originally uttered. The words, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 21. And all the carved images of her gods he has broken to the ground. Oh, my threshing and the grain of my floor, that which I have heard from the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I declare to you. The burden against Duma, Arabia. This, these are literal locations in Arabia. He calls out to me, huh, did, did you see that? Was that on the screen? That flash of light? 
Where did that just come from? Oh my goodness, you guys. Did anyone see that? There was a screen, a flash of light on the screen. It came through the window. What? What's going on? <clears throat> Lord? Huh. That really threw me there. Okay, he calls out to me out of sea air. Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said the morning comes and also the night. If you inquire, inquire, return, come back. Somebody's giving news of of impending doom. The burden against Arabia. In the forest in Arabia you will lodge, O oh, you travelling companies of Dedanites, O oh, inhabitants of the land of Timur, bring water to him is thirsty, with their bread they met him who fled, for they fled from the sword, from the drawn sword, from the bent bow, and from the distress of war. For thus the Lord has said to me, and it's no secret, friends, the people in Arabia know that they are under threat from Iran. <clears throat> but do they know there is a potential threat from Azerbaijan and the Kurds in the future? No, probably not. <clears throat> so they know they need to contain Iran. So this alliance between Israel and Saudi Arabia is a no-brainer in terms of security because they have one blatant common enemy. But it's not just Iran, you see. That is the threat. It's the king of the north, the will be, which will be the leader. <clears throat> For thus the Lord has said to me, within a year, according to the year of a hired man, all the glory of Kedar will fail. And the remainder of the number of archers, the mighty men of the people of Kedar, will be diminished. It's going to take a massive war to destroy this place but the focus of this was these people groups media and knowing that the Azerbaijanis or the Azeris and the Kurds are connected to these people groups is very very interesting another location that I wanted to show show you What's this news I had up? Oh, goodness. I, I have so many links and tabs open, friends. I'm like this. I'm a bit of a geek when I prepare my, my news presentations. I have to remind myself you might not be interested in a lot of what I'm sharing. But I know some of you are really appreciative. How Iraqi Kurdistan can be of strategic importance for Azerbaijan. They've got a common ancestry. Kinship. They go back, way back. The meeting between Azerbaijani President Aliyev, who is a psychopath, by the way. You know, interesting that Aliyev and Erdogan are like brothers. But here, he's talking about building bonds with the Kurds. <laughs> Sums up the political world, doesn't it? They agree together here on one policy. But over here, they'll completely go the opposite end. So they met to strengthen further bilateral ties between the two nations which dates back thousands of years and I believe this is just the beginning of this bond until it becomes into a unified alliance which will bring the destruction of Arabia so the future has yet to show how bad things are going to get interrelationally with these nations you know we read on the news gulf nations normalizing ties with turkey and bahrain and all these yeah whatever right right i'm not i'm not convinced <laughs> it is worth noting that kurds are one of the active minority groups in multi-ethnic azerbaijan and they have played active roles in statehood building in the country they have been broadly presented in Azerbaijan state from art to politics. What's gonna something has to give here eventually between Erdogan and Azerbaijan? Because it's the Kurds, friends, there's something about this region. You know when you have that feeling but you just can't put your finger on it to say, This is the thing I'm trying to but I I'm onto something here and I touched on this several times now. You may have noticed I've, I've mentioned it and then I didn't hone in on it because I wasn't at peace 
with what the Lord was revealing to me. Wasn't enough information. But I'm beginning to see a picture form now. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Are you tracking with me? Please tell me I'm making sense to you, please. Somebody say something in the comment section. Azerbaijan always has a warm attitude toward Kurds and they have never felt any discrimination against themselves as Azerbaijan like other ethnic minorities. It should be mentioned that when tens of thousand Muslim Kurds together with Azerbaijanis were forcibly deported for Armenia, you see, it's going to come down to this, they got together and they agreed on the Armenia issue. God forbid if Azerbaijan and the Kurds were ever to get together now to really put the pressure on in Armenia. Lord have mercy. Where they had lived for thousands of years, Azerbaijan did not discriminate and embrace Kurds as well as Azerbaijanis besides that anyway. Just to show you, they have a relationship. It goes way back and interestingly enough, the scripture points us to the region of Iran or Ilam and the Medes who will come and attack the Arabs those in Didan in Timar Saudi Arabia signs energy cooperation with Azerbaijan that was earlier in May so they all go to the Arabs to get the money you see but really they're gonna hate her and burn her with fire you see the the spiritual harlotry that the Arabs hold or hold sway over the kings of the earth is the money is the status and number one Islam don't forget the primary um, harlotry the asset to Saudi Arabia is Islam ancient philistine map because the scripture talked about philistine ancient philistine philistia gaza territory just to show you hamas dominate this area now even pakistan 13 hours ago look saudi arabia announced major visa changes for pakistan lebanon and 10 other countries not only that they just got bailed out as well pakistan just got bailed out by the international monetary fund and it needed it, it desperately needed it because it's bankrupt. Another map, ancient Kurdistan. Friends, just, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Can you just, somebody just say, you know, you're not the only one, I see it now. <laughs> Look at the map, the location. It covers the Euphrates, it pinpoints ancient, ancient Assyria, Babylonian, Greece, Middle Persian maps. Is right at the center. Is there any wonder why it's such a hotly contested piece of real estate as well as Jerusalem? When there's a resolution about this region, that is a clear sign, I think, right now. <laughs> a clear indication that we're very close to the revealing of the man of sin. I'll read this first paragraph. How about how about that? A century has elapsed since one of history's most hypocritical, enduring and consequential betrayals of principle. Following World War One and the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, an independent Kurdistan was about to emerge. You see, I read this and there's something about this whole Kurdistan region that is telling me it's connected to the restrainer. There's somebody restraining this from happening for a good reason. What do you think? Tell me your thoughts. In Europe, the Treaty of Versailles had implemented the principle of self-determination for ethnically defined peoples, giving birth to new nation states. F ethnically divined peoples and in the scripture let me bring up the other map oh there's also another one remember this one the seven mountains the woman rides these regions these former empires and their regions so think of the 
diversity of ethnicities amongst these kingdoms today. We know the beast will be a divided kingdom, but somehow they come together, they agree on one thing, and the one thing is fight against Jesus, fight against Israel, and persecute the saints. Imagine the thing that they all agree on. So, ethnically diverse region, the woman, Islam, the power it holds sway over this region is Islam. <clears throat> Here in red, going up vertically, beast that is not in Revelation 13. Or rather, Revelation 17. 1924, Turkey abolishes the caliphate. The deadly head wound. But there's so much talk about reviving it. You see, it's not a revival of the Roman Empire. It's the revival of the Islamic Eastern, that conquered Eastern Byzantium Empire, the Turks. So a divided kingdom, partly strong, partly fragile. Ethnically defined peoples giving birth to new nation states. Just think of the region. If they finally deal with this solution, with the, find a solution to the Kurdish question, they'll think peace has truly come in the region. Because it will have a trickle effect into Iraq and the problems that Israel is facing there with Iran backed militias and affects Hezbollah and his Tahrir and Hamas. You see, I mean, globally in that region, let's say wider region, it will have a huge impact. Likewise, in the Middle East, the Kurds were promised local autonomy. You see, this is a problem Erdogan has with Assad, Bashar al-Assad, because he won't hone in on the people who he considers terrorist threat to Turkey. So was like, we were all fine until this all happened. <clears throat> but notice, as the US and the West is pulling out of the region, Iran is stepping in, and so is Turkey, not Russia. Russia and its presence is being compromised because of its conflict in Ukraine. I've been saying this from the beginning. We're on point all the way until today. So let's see how things take place. <clears throat> right. Likewise, in the Middle East, the Kurds were promised local autonomy and then independence from Ottoman Empire within one year by the Treaty of Serbs, 10th of August, 1920. But the Allies shortly reneged on the treaty and it was eventually reversed by the Treaty of Lausanne. Forestalling the emergence, just amazing to me, I don't know, something about this wording. Forestalling the emergence of Kurdistan as a sovereign state. Look, if I am proven wrong, then so be it. I'll eat humble pie and I'll say, I was wrong on it. Okay, no problem. Let's move on. Despite its official title as the Treaty of Peace with Turkey, the Lausanne Treaty fell short of establishing peace and stability in the region. The Kurds were thereupon divided among the states of Turkey, Iran, Syria and Iraq and the Soviet Union to some degree. Divided into four. Anyway. The Euphrates River. Kurdistan would be bam right in the middle of this, right? And what do the scriptures say? When it dries up, a way will be prepared for the kings of the east. 200 million man army it's still a problem it's still drying up May 2023 you see when Lucifer the, the serpent tempted Adam and Eve friends what, what location it was in a geographic location yes it was in this place <clears throat> it would make sense that when he's cast out Let's read that one moment. So much. You see, so much going on in my head. I'm trying to relay it to you. My mind works fast like that sometimes. 
like I have a lot of tabs opened in my mind and so I've got to selectively pick and choose which one to go through <laughs> okay Revelation 12 it says here let's read from 7 verse 7 and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought to the dragon. And I believe it is Michael who is the restrainer. I've done a video on this. I covered it very well, I think. If it's not Michael, then it's an angel. An angelic being is the restrainer of the other fallen angelic being, the dragon, basically. So there's a big fight. <clears throat> Michael and his angels fought to the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. They're no longer able to um, reside in this area. So the great dragon was cast out. And he's not cast out of a different location. I believe Satan was thrown out of the Holy of Holy area in the heavens. But there was another element to it where he resided. After this conflict, this war that breaks out in that heaven, the second heaven, he is now thrown down to the earth, the final fall of Satan. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. I believe the location is by the Euphrates River. <clears throat> By the heart of the former Assyrian Babylonian Empire. <clears throat> by ancient Garden of Eden. He's going to resume. You know, resume when you continue where you left off, friends. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength, the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accused of our brethren, he accused them before our God. Day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. So immediately this persecution. Because there's going to be bloodshed. Immediately. You see how bad it's going to be. <clears throat> I wish there was a way of getting my messages out to the believers who live in those regions. And if there was somebody who was able to translate my videos in those languages. Is it possible you guys? Could somebody do that? Because really those are the ones that need to hear this message. You know, come on, let's do that. Is there anyone who can transcribe my messages in the languages? And there's so many of diverse dialects in the region. So the believers know what's coming. Excuse me. And the elver came him by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Because they have, they're rid of him, right? So they're celebrating. But he says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. So it's important to know. They're geographical locations that we need to consider. <clears throat> Another short clip I want to read um, regarding the Euphrates is here. Along with the Nile, the Indus, the Yellow River, Euphrates was one of the early craters of civilization. It's proven the most earliest cradle of civilization was Mesopotamia, which is the heart of the region of the River Euphrates. It helped a succession of Mesopotamian empires flourish. Flourish, okay. Now, today, the Euphrates continues to be of vital importance to Turkey, Syria, and Iraq, the three countries home to the river. And this is telling me this is the location of the Antichrist. He has to dominate here. This is why it's such a troublesome region, friends. This spiritual warfare is so intense here. And remember, there are angelic principalities over the regions governing them. Mm -hmm. 
Remember I spoke to you about Russia and Ukraine. I just want to mention this before I end this video. Remember I said that there's a potential war between Russia and Turkey coming. And I don't think anyone paid attention to what I was saying because it's like, well, she says a lot. It's hard to keep up with it or whatever. They had problems in the past. There's unfinished business between Turkey and Russia. And I'm expecting there to be conflict here. I hope there isn't. I hope there isn't. I hope I'm wrong. But Turkey is outsmarted, outmaneuvering Russia. You've seen this happen. It's happened after I said this is going to happen. So keep your eyes peeled, friends. Turkey's, the nation Turkey, checking out the author, is he legitimate? Who is this guy? The nation Turkey is going to be top dog in the region. And he's strategically working it out. And it's all going to be over natural resources. You've heard me say this so many times. So this conflict is not irrelevant. It's hugely relevant to the end times because it's shaping how the rise of the beast is going to come. MENA is Middle East North African region. Right. <clears throat> okay. There's so much I want to share. I'm going to do another video on it, friends. G Gaza, Hamas territory. Let me just see if I can open this. Open as a new image. Oh, it's a tiny image. We know that... Okay. Islamic terrorism is fueled by Islamic doctrine. Okay. If it wasn't for Saudi Arabia, there would be no Islam. So you see the power of the harlot over the nations, the kings of the earth. When the word says kings of the earth, I think automatically our minds go to the United Nations or the EU or NATO. The kings of the earth are these kings in the Middle East. Those are the regions where the spiritual harlotry has influenced those kings because they are all Islamic nations. If you remove Islam from the picture, the whole geographic location will be entirely different. It's that that holds sway over these kings. It controls Hamas, it controls Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, all the Islamic terrorist organizations. It controls Iran, even though the flavors of Islam are different, the Sunni strain or the Shia strain or the Sufi mystic strain it's all still Islamic in its different various flavors so this is a scenario that Israel is going to face in the near future the surrounding nations consolidating them can you think about this for a minute the surrounding nations consolidating their resources their power their military strength and coming against it and taking East Jerusalem because they want East Jerusalem, friends. This is why Israel is seeking alliance with Jordan, with Egypt and with Saudi Arabia, with the Arabs in the south. Instead of seeking refuge in the Holy One of Israel, Israel is again repeating a bad mistake. But it's all according to the word of God. We know that God is, in his wisdom, has predetermined the way things are going to play out for glory it will be a glorious end result a glorious future a glorious destiny for zion and for the believers in christ yes martyrdom is coming for the church martyrdom is coming for the believers in yeshua hamashiach martyrdom is coming friends so we need to prepare for difficult days ahead Prayerfully. I'm going to be back again with Romans chapter 4. I'm really enjoying my Romans series. If you're missing out on my Romans series because you're only interested in Bible prophecy, you're missing out because it's a wonderful, edifying series and I think it's wonderful anyway. I meanwhile, I'll be keeping eyes peeled on this situation. Sorry friends, it was a little bit all over the place today. It's only because this is really like wow i mean what there was a reason why this state was prevented from coming to pass 
and I believe if the day comes when it becomes a state oh my goodness it's going to seem like peace is broken out this is in the middle it's preventing peace for all these nations <clears throat> you see anyway if you found this interesting please leave a a crit, um a uh, encouraging comment in the comment section <laughs> friends i'll be back again soon remember to watch oh i forgot about this video too i did this video ukraine's use of human shields and molotov cocktails versus the israeli palestinian conflict at the time of me recording this as far as i am aware i was the only one that made this connection after this there were others who made this connection so praise the lord for his no his wisdom let me play you a little clip to show you what i'm talking about uh, i'll play it from here well let's see what happens with that guy i doubt he's gonna get his um, freedom to report like he was <coughs> on rt america at least more videos to share before i get to the chunk of what i want to say there's a I've basically been connecting some dots that I noticed. I noticed a pattern in this um, conflict currently with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And I want to get to that during this presentation today. Now, this video is from Shanghai Eye. And this was, let me just check the date. I want to give you the date to when it was aired earlier today as well this this all popping up on my live stream today backstories on kiev shopping mall bombing that the west won't tell us about you remember i made a comment about the bombing at the hospital and i asked you my audience my listener to go back and check those uh, footages those video footages of what actually happened and come back and tell me do you really believe that was legitimate in the ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflicts over the years, over the decades, we've seen this constant language or this, um, what's the difference, if you could say, between terrorists and freedom fighters? What's really the difference, right? Israel has been dealing with Palestinians throwing rocks, Molotov cocktails, right? And when Israel goes into certain territories to go and stop those attacks, the international media goes berserk, right? Hold that thought. Hold on. gonna have to watch the rest of the video for yourselves that video is so good friends i put so much research together to present this um information you have to watch it for yourself friends i made the connection like basically if you consider um israel today and well for the past several decades since its inception as a state israel let me leave you with um Where's my, did I close down my graphics? I'll leave you with a map. Israel has been dealing with the Palestinian situation, trying to contain it. Similarly, notice the resemblance. Similarly, Russia has been trying to do the same with Ukraine. There are so many similarities and watch that video. It explains what I'm trying to say. <laughs> anyway friends you know the thing is we've been seeing israel having a lot of problems at home right now and it's growing the world is growing more hostile more agitated and less tolerant of israel's policies and even more so now seeing as they want to change and reform the judicial the judicial system in israel so it's a very telling time as to where things are going to go from now on forward but keep your eyes peeled, friends. I'll be back again soon. I've still got a lot I want to share with you. So I've got to kind of contain that over there myself. Until next time. I will be back again on Tuesday for Romans chapter 4. 
and the following Friday for my next Bible prophecy update there's more I'm going to share with you and um, praise the Lord he's going to help me share it with you see you again soon bye bye